Hello everyone. Hope you are all good. Welcome to Beginners Biology. In this video, let's discuss about cholinogenic assay. Let's understanding the meaning of cholinogenic assay. See, when we have treated a set of normal cells or a cancer cells with drugs or given treatment with ionizing radiation, we need to know whether the effect of ionizing radiation or a particular drug on on the cells ability to survive and reproduce the cholinogenic assay is one such assay to assess the reproductive potential and the proliferation ability of the cells so these are the basic utilities of the assay so let's see what is meant by cholinogenic the cholinogenic survival assay determines the ability of a single cell to divide indefinitely for example this is a single cell so this cell further divide to form a single colony so when it forms a single colony the cell is said to be cholinogenic okay and the number of colonies are measured by colony forming unit that is also known as cfu Now let's see the materials that are used for cholinogenic assay. The cholinogenic in cholinogenic assay we use both sterile and non-sterile materials. In sterile materials we have growth medium which has serum in it, and here you can also see that we can you we use serum-free medium which does not contain serum in it. The serum can be fetal bovine serum or uh, BSA, which is bovine serum albumin. Okay. In the next one, we use our cell culture flax and petri dishes along with trypsin crude, 0.5 to 5%. And in non-sterile, we use PBS, formaldehyde, crystal violet, and hemocytometer or electronic cell counter to count the colonies and cells. Now let's discuss the cholinogenic assay protocol. So before starting the Uh, protocol of cholinogenic assay it is mandatory to know the plating efficiency okay it is important to know the plating efficiency of the cells that you are seeding so plating efficiency means uh, it's the percentage of cells that are seeded at the time of subculture that gives rise to colonies okay so the first step in the protocol is the treatment of monoculture Uh, cells with the experimental agent so the experimental agent can be ionizing radiation or a chemical drug so for about uh, 24 to 44 48 hours with the experimental agent the monolayer cell cultures are treated actually the time of ex exposure depends upon the toxicity effect that is exerted by that specific experimental compound okay in the next step the trypsinization takes place using 0.25% trypsin followed by serial dilution so after serial dilution the cells are plated according to the plating efficiency as i have uh, discussed earlier so after that the cells are incubated in co2 incubator for 9 to 14 days and the cells must be observed daily under microscope okay to record the cell growth after 9 to 14 days the cells are fixed with 4% formaldehyde followed by washings with pbs it can be sterile or non sterile pbs okay uh, after washing with pbs using 1% crystal violet solution the cells are stained the colonies are stained mainly as you can see here uh, let us say this is the control one and these are the test samples with increasing concentrations of experimental compound see that's why the uh, the number of colonies see let's say this is a b c so uh, for example you have treated a certain experimental compound of uh, uh, of very high concentration maybe this is the moderate concentration and this is the low concentration you can see how the colonies are forming okay uh, very high number of colonies moderate number of colonies and very less number of colonies i hope you are getting this 
now let's discuss the essay end point so after the essay is done it is important to measure the colonogenic sur uh, survival that means how many uh, uh, colonies are survived for the number of cells you have seeded so in here you uh, you come across the plating efficiency and the survival fraction as we have discussed about the plating efficiency earlier let's see what is survival fraction survival fraction is the number of colonies counted after the experiment versus the number of colonies plated with the correction of plating efficiency for example if there are 100 100 cells seeded at the prior of the experiment and you get 70 colonies after counting it so how how you calculate plating efficiency is you have to divide by number of colonies by the number of cells seeded this gives the plating efficiency of 0.7 percent so how the survival fraction is calculated from this plating efficiency is for example you have seeded 2000 cells at the prior of the experiment and you have got uh, 32 colonies from it uh, 32 i'm talking about the surviving colonies uh, i'm talking about the colonies sorry i'm talking about the colonies not surviving or dead colonies i'm talking about colonies in general so after that what you have to do is you have to divide the number of colonies by the number of cells you have seeded and the percentage of the plating efficiency this one will give you the survival fraction which is 2.3 uh, percent okay I so this is the survival curve after the experiment okay so the survival curve is a semi log plot which represents the survival fraction of the cells against the experimental agent for example in this the curve is against the cytotoxin versus survival fraction of the cells here you can see ic50 and ic90 uh, so what are the terms IC50 and IC90 mean let's see IC50 means inhibitory concentration okay which refers to the drug concentration that is required to inhibit the viability of cell thus IC50 means is the respective concentration of the drug that is use it to inhibit the 50 percent of colony survival while IC90 is that inhibits the 90 percent of colony formation so uh, this forms within a linear range as you can see here and you get a semi log plot so this is how a colony appears under the microscope a and b are the uh, cells that are seeded in the six well plate for example okay so uh, when you zoom in under the microscope you can see c d and e images now let's see what are the factors that influence the colonogenic assay there are several factors among them the important ones are listed here the first one is the concentration of the toxic agent that is used the next one is the duration of the exposure that is the time of the exposure in presence of the experimental agent and the next one is the cell density during the exposure and the cell density during the colony along with the size of colony so these are the factors that influence the colonogenic assay I hope you got some information about colonogenic essay. I thank you all for watching the video. If you like the video, hit the like button and share it with your friends. Kindly subscribe to Beginners Biology and support the channel.